Hello, in this session we will look at an introduction to Terraform workspaces. Now we can correlate this Terraform workspaces to a branching concept that we have in Git. Right? So uh, what is Git branching? Git branching can be used whenever you want to isolate your work. So by default, we'll have one branch in Git which is either your master branch or the main branch. Now as a developer, whenever you want to make any changes to the code or you want to modify the code, what we do is we create a branch let's call it as a feature branch and the feature branch is where we make our changes now the reason we do this is to isolate our changes so that we are not having any impact or any effect on the um, stable code which is available in the master branch or the main branch now likewise we can do the same thing in a terraform also by making use of your terraform workspaces so git branching is used uh, when we want to isolate our work so whenever we want to make any changes to the code we create a new branch and we start making changes on the new branch so this way whatever the changes we have made in the new branch will not have any effect on the main branch so it will the new changes it will stay in the uh, new branch only and unless we don't get it merged with the main branch it will stay in the main, uh, uh, new branch and will ha not have any effect on the stable code running in the main branch so the same can be applied in terraform by using workspaces that is we can create uh, logical partitions um, instead of having multiple copies of the code uh, in, in multiple directories. So when we create cloud resources using Terraform configuration language, the resources are known to be created in the default workspace. So uh, until now we have been using the workspace which is the default workspace. So here um, for now the we'll, we'll just uh, i'll just type the command but uh, later on we will be talking about uh, the diff different different commands that we have with your workspace so here terraform uh, workspace let me show terraform workspace list and this will list the workspace that are available so by default you should be able to see uh, one workspace which is your default workspace so whenever we are creating our resources all the resources are getting created in this default workspace now workspace is a way to maintain multiple copies of deployments that can be created and destroyed on the go so again like i said this is a logical partitioning uh, and maintaining multiple copies of your uh, code the configuration files so the information about all the resources managed by terraform is stored in a state file so all the resources that we are creating on the cloud platform the information about those resources are stored in a file and we call that as a terraform state file now we will be talking about your state file uh, later on so it is important to store this state file in a secure location so until now um, we are um, working with this state file on the local machine itself but uh, when we talk about your state file it should always be stored in a secure location so later on we will be talking more on your state files how to manage it how to store it so every terraform run is associated with a state file for validation and reference purposes any modifications to the terraform configuration planned or applied are always first validated with the references in the state files and the execution result is updated back to it so let's say for example uh, i will go and launch an ec2 instance now all the information related to that ec2 instance will be stored in this state file now after some time if i go and update the configuration file let's say i'm updating the ami or i'm changing the ami and if i run the terraform apply command once again what terraform will do is terraform will take the new changes i have done it will validate and it will reference it with the state file and then that is how it understands that okay to destroy that resource and recreate that resource so it uses this state file for the reference purpose uh, to see whether the resources are matching or not or whether there is a change in the resources or not so if you are not consciously using any workspace then all of this work happens in your default workspace so like i said you know if you're not really um, looking at the workspace by default everything is happening in the default workspace for us so workspaces um, like i've already said it mainly helps you to isolate uh, independent deployments of the same terraform configuration while using the 
same state file. So basically here, instead of maintaining multiple copies of the Terraform configuration files, we can use the same configuration file but with different workspaces. So let's say you have this main.tf file, variables.tf file and then terraform.tf vars file. Now you want to deploy this in two different environments. So let's say you want to run this in the dev environment and in the UAT environment. Now instead of maintaining two copies of these files, we can create two workspaces. Okay, so the dev workspace and the QA workspace. So for easier understanding, you can think of this as your dev branch and the QA branch. So this way, you'll have a copy of the same code in the respective workspaces. And then you can apply this in your dev environment and the QA workspace in the QA environment, which will maintain its own state files. So this way, uh, uh, you don't have to maintain multiple copies of the code. Rather, you'll be using these workspaces, which are isolated sections, and this will have its own respective code. And then we can start deploying this in the respective environments. So working with Terraform involves managing collections of infrastructure resources, and most organizations manage many different collections. So um, likewise, you may have different different environments like your QA environment, your UAT, your prod environment, your system test, so different different environments. Now, and so imagine you have six different environments. So instead of maintaining six copies of your code, we can maintain six workspaces, but with only one copy of the code. So the amount of code that you'll end up writing will be much, much lesser. So when you run locally, Terraform manages each collection of infrastructure with a persistent working directory, which contains a configuration state data and variables so here we are running our terraform locally all right and then here if you see we are maintaining um, a, a folder for every environment and each of these environment will have the uh, configuration files and if we apply this the state file and everything gets generated for us now since terraform cli uses content from the directory it runs in you can organize infrastructure resources into meaningful groups by keeping their configurations in separate directories. So one way, like let's say for example, you want to manage the infrastructure for multiple environments. Now one way we have is, we can maintain multiple directories for the respective environment. So for example, here if you have created four uh, directories with the respective environment. So this is for dev, prod, QA and UAT. And if we look at each of these, um, all the directories, it has the same configuration file so i have the locals main provider terraform.tfr variables the same files i have for prod the same for qa the same for uat okay now workspaces in the terraform cli refer to separate instances of state data inside the same terraform working directory so uh, what terraform workspaces will do is instead of maintaining these four different directories we will be maintaining only one directory However, inside this one directory, we will be maintaining multiple workspaces for the respective environments. So, which are basically your logical partitionings. So, they can distinctly different, uh, they are distinctly different from workspaces in Terraform Cloud, which each have their own Terraform configuration and function as separate working directories. So, we have this Terraform workspaces concept in the Terraform Cloud as well. We will be talking about that later on. Uh, Terraform relies on state to associate resources with real world objects. So Terraform is heavily dependent on the state file for referencing the objects, validating the objects. So when you run the same configuration multiple times with separate state data, Terraform can manage multiple sets of non-overlapping resources. So this way, because of this Terraform workspaces, we can make use of the same configuration file multiple times and each of these workspace will maintain its own state file which will uh, help us with the non-overlapping resources so every initialized working directory starts with one na workspace named default workspace so like i've already shown by default every time you initialize your directory you will have one workspace which is your default workspace so here you can see we have one workspace which is the default workspace now what are the use cases so um, 
one so let's say you don't want to use the terraform workspace right so you can create multiple working directories to maintain multiple instances of a configuration with separate state data which is what we have done here all right so we can create multiple directories which will have its own respective configuration files however terraform installs a separate cache of plugins and modules for each working directory so maintaining multiple directories can waste bandwidth and disk space so what happens here with this model is that every directory will have its own set of caches it will have its own set of plugins so dev will have the plugin again prod will have the plugin qa will have the plugin uat will have the same plugins now because of this your uh, there is a wastage of your bandwidth and also the disk space so let's say your dev environment has the respective files your qa has the respective files your uat has the respective files your prod has the respective files so basically they are same files the same set of codes but you basically replicated it across the different different directories and then when we initialize this each of these will maintain the plugins the same plugins will be available in the uh, uh, four directories now this approach also requires extra tasks like updating configuration from version control for each working directory separately and reinitializing every directory when you change the configuration so let's say you are updating the dev uh, uh, environment in your source control you'll have to update your you'll have to reinitialize this respectively accordingly so there's an extra amount of work that is involved if you're going to maintain separate separate directory for each of your environment now workspaces are convenient because they let you create different sets of infrastructure with the same working copy of your configuration and the same plugin and module caches so you can have one copy so instead of maintaining four different copies i can maintain one copy of the configuration files and just create different workspaces like the dev workspace or the qa workspace and then i can start creating my different set of infrastructures by making use of this workspace so a common use for multiple workspaces is to create a parallel distinct copy of a set of infrastructure to set uh, sorry to test a set of changes before modifying production infrastructure so like you know you want to create this infra for multiple environments in parallel at the same time then you can make use of your terraform workspaces so that's basically what your terraform workspaces are so once again terraform workspaces are same as your branching concept so uh, you can think of this as your isolated um, logical partitioning that we are doing so basically we'll be using the same configuration file for different different environments that's all for this session thank you once again before you leave please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you like the video leave a like and please share the video